Hi guys, welcome back to my messy apartment where it's extremely hot as of late, you see my cheeks are blushing and also welcome to the second episode of The Good Player. Now, this time I'm going to talk about something that we all hate, which is alignment system. I see alignment system as almost pointless, but let's get further into that. I get the alignment system for paladins, for clerics, for monks and such, but for the rest of the classes it's simply useless. People usually act on their whim, both in and out of game. There simply is no point in making your character something that you cannot simply play out. Now that I shared a little bit of hate about the alignment system with you guys, let's talk about its mechanics. There's low neutrality and chaos on one axis and good neutrality evil on the other one. So let me explain how I like to think about the alignment system. Let's start with low chaos axis. On one side there is the law, which is pretty much a bunch of codes. Moral codes, codes in general, personal codes, law, etc. etc. And on the other side there is chaos, which is a full disregard of law and a fight for someone's freedom. Let's first talk about the real life persons. As well as me, you must probably have a friend who is very strict about their moral codes. So what happens when something penetrates their moral barrier, their world falls apart completely. They either start behaving aggressively or fall into a depression or something similar to that. Persons with strict moral codes are being tested by their environment each and every day and their psyche has to endure through it. On the other hand we have chaos, people with complete disregard of law and moral codes. They will show respect for some parts of the law but they will most probably try to neglect it completely. Think about your friends who are most likely to get drunk or do drugs or go for one-eyed stands. We all know such people and pretty much when you think about chaotic behavior that's what you think of. So on one side we have government officials, law-abiding citizens, people with strict moral codes and on the other side we have something that is completely opposite like uh, hippies or human rights, animal rights activists, those guys mean well, but they sure piss a hell of a lot of people. And then there is neutrality, the fine line between the two. Neutral people find their respect for both law and chaos and find understanding for both of them, but are not really into the extremes. And now we have good versus evil, the old philosophical topic. We could start a debate about what's actually good and what's actually evil because there is a good intention behind every single action. For instance, law-abiding people will respect the law because they think that that's one step closer to the world peace. And on the other hand, we have a serial killer which is hell-bent on ridding the world of prostitutes and they're filthy. Not my words, that was an actual case. So goodness in general is respect for all sentient life and everyone's rights. And on the other side we have evil, which is a complete opposite of that. And on the other hand, there is true neutral, which is pretty much understanding and respect for everything or, on the other hand, a lack thereof. So, now that we went through all this, let's talk about the pop culture characters that fit into all these alignments. Or do they? For the lawful good characters, everyone's first impression is Superman, but for me, not quite. I would rather put Green Lantern at the first place of lawful good. Why? Well, because the Green Lantern Corps is the embodiment of lawful good. They fight for goodness and what's right and they have their own code, thus being the prime example of that alignment. Superman on the other hand, yes, he respects the law, but he's kind of shifting between lawful good and neutral good. He's never gonna put other people in jeopardy because the law says so. As for the lawful neutral, I think that the Judge Dredd is actually a prime example of this alignment. He is the judge, the jury and the executioner all at the same time. Actually quoting Judge Dredd, I am the law, which means he's pretty much conducting the law on his whims. On the other hand, there's Lobo, one of my favorite characters by the way. He is a mercenary, a contractor. He's gonna fulfill the contract, but on the other hand, once he fulfills the contract, you can never say what he will do. So he respects the law and he respects the contract. But on the other hand, there is this chaotic behavior that he shows from time to time. So once he gets the contract done, you can never know what he might do. As for the lawful evil, I think that everybody would agree that Darth Vader is the prime example of it. Of course, there are better examples among the Sith Lords, but Darth Vader is the most popular one. He is very lawful, very strict about his code, and he will punish if you disobey him. And on the other hand, there is Doctor Doom, which is not quite the lawful evil guy. Yeah. He has his evil ways, he has his evil laws, but on the other hand, 
he is a very good leader to his people and a very good family man, which makes him kinda lawful neutral maybe, or even lawful good sometimes. So let's talk about neutral good now. We have the whole X-Men group. As a group, most of them are neutral good, but they do follow Professor X, who's somewhere in between lawful good and neutral good himself. He's got his strict laws, but not so much hell-bent on conducting them if the need arises, if you break them or something. And on the other hand, you have Spider-Man, which most people consider to be neutral good, but he's somewhere in between neutral good and chaotic good. As for the neutral good part, we all get it. He's trying to do good with a lot of responsible use of his powers. But then there is this chaotic side of him, which brings him to the teenager part of his character. Just simple indecisiveness. He cannot cope with the chaos in his head all that well. As for the true neutral, I think that Dr. Manhattan is the best example ever, because he just is. He just wants to be left alone, he understands everything, and he doesn't judge anything. And then we have Marvel Comics' Madam Web, who's just an observer, an overseer of everybody's fate. As for the neutral evil, I think that my prime example would be Mystique. She's definitely evil, and what makes her neutral evil is that she's just trying to make everything work for herself. And then we have one of Batman's villains, Penguin, which is also a good example of neutral evil. He's just a crime lord. He doesn't cause chaos for the sake of chaos, he just causes unease for his own sake. On the other hand, we have a Riddler, who's, well, also neutral evil, but he does cause chaos for the sake of chaos with his riddles. As for the chaotic good, I think that Robin Hood is the prime example of the pop culture's chaotic good character, but let's just talk about somebody else. I think that Starfire is also a good example of chaotic good alignment. Not just because she's of a good alignment and a hero, but also because she's kind of misunderstood by society. And that's not because she wants to be misunderstood, it's just because she's from another world and people just don't get her. As for the chaotic neutral, I think that the Punisher is the best example of it. He's got a good heart, but he's damaged goods. He kills a lot, he enjoys killing, he enjoys other people's suffering, but only if they did him some wrong. On the other hand, he's got a good heart, so to speak. He protects his friends and people who are good to him. So that kind of makes him run all around the axis, I think. And as for chaotic evil, I think that Carnage is the best example ever. That's the character that will just do Carnage. His name says so. Now you would ask yourself, why did I not mention Joker? Well, it's because Joker isn't chaotic evil per se. He's got his plans, he's conducting his plans, so that kind of makes him a little bit lawful, but in a twisted way, you know. Uh, so he's not the prime example of chaotic evil. But yes, he does not show any respect for the human life or for the life of his minions or whatever. And then there's Harley Quinn, the Joker's lover, who's essentially, well, maybe not good, but neutral, a chaotic neutral character, but goes to the side of chaotic evil, so she kind of runs in the near vicinity of the chaotic evil. And now you're thinking, I never mentioned Batman. Well, it's because he's also all over the scale. Let me explain this. Some would say that he's chaotic good because he's a vigilante. Well, no, because he's got his own strict codes but he's above the law, which makes him lawful neutral, I guess. But he's got some chaotic behavior, like having a son with Talia al Ghul, maybe. Or showing a little regard for the thugs he beats up. But does that make him chaotic? Or does it make him maybe true neutral? Because, well, he's pretty much always ready to sacrifice himself and others for the greater good. So where does he actually fit between the two axes? Now you see my point, there is no actual alignment that a character can follow, and that's why I don't like it all that much. But here's an idea for you. Make a scale of the nine alignments, and for each alignment, give it a grade. Like a mark of how much of that alignment your character possesses. Try it in your homebrew campaign and just tell me what do you think, how well does it fit 
within your D&D or Pathfinder or whatever other campaigns. Bottom line, boys and girls, ask your DM if he gives a damn about alignment or not. If not, just pick one and go nuts, feel free to do whatever you want. On the other hand, if your DM cares about the rules and the alignment system, well then you're dealing with a lawful person. Good luck. Now that I got this off my chest, I would like to thank you for listening to me rant. Please subscribe if you're new to this channel and give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Also, there are links to my Instagram and Facebook page if you want to follow me there. And of course, my Patreon page if you want to back me up. I would really appreciate that. And as always, this is Crafty and I bid you farewell.